Greetings, everybody. So let's look at this question about uh, confidence intervals, okay? So as I read it here, it says that we have a random sample of 48 people. And in that sample, there is a mean body mass index of 26.3 and a standard deviation of 6.07. And then I have three parts after that about the confidence interval. But before I go into answering the parts of this question, I wanted to tell you how I would think about the scenario. And if you see the simplified big picture, it may help you understand things overall. Okay. So here's the scenario as I see it. There's a population of people and we want to know the mean or average body mass index. Uh, so the population is the entire group that we want to study. It might be all adults or all adults of a certain age range or something like that. Normally, the population is too big to study on its own. Okay. I say that because if I really say we wanted to know the average body mass index of all adults, then we would measure the body mass index of every single adult and average them together and we'd have our answer. But can you imagine there's just too many people to do that we cannot measure the body mass index of every single person and find the average okay so what we do since the population is ordinarily too big to study is we take a sample from the population so remember it like this the population is the group that we want to know something about and we take the sample from the population in order to learn something about the population so in this problem, we take a sample of 48 people from the population and we do some calculations for the same. You might think, oh, we got 48 people. We measure the body mass index of every single one of them. It's just 48 people. So we can do that. And we find that the mean body mass index is 26.3 with a standard deviation 6.07. Okay. And then from there, the question becomes, what does the sample tell us about the population? So I took the sample, I found their mean body mass index. What does that tell me about the population that I'm wanting to know something about from the beginning? Okay. So that's how I would think about what's happening here. Um, as far as how to answer it, we will make a confidence interval. Okay. So first part of that is to decide which distribution we're going to ultimately use. So in our class, we'll either use a standard normal distribution or a T distribution to make confidence intervals. Okay. So for this first question uh, that involves deciding which one to use, I'll just have to ask you to accept this as a matter of fact, that we will use a T distribution whenever the sample is random, whenever the sample size is 30 or bigger and Sigma is unknown. So let me dissect that a little bit. What's a random sample? A random sample is one in which any person in the population is equally likely to be chosen to be in the sample. Okay. That's a, a random sample. Uh, in contrast, it wouldn't be a random sample if I just chose my friends out of the group or the people that seemed like they had a low body mass index. Okay. For a sample to be random, Anybody can be chosen with equal likelihood. Second part, n bigger than or equal to 30. Now, n is always the variable for sample size in our class. So the sample size has to be 30 or bigger. And sigma is the population standard deviation, has to be unknown. So I see the word standard deviation right here. So does that mean sigma, the population standard deviation, is unknown? Uh, well, this standard deviation is of the sample. Remember the sample and the population are two different things. Okay. Uh, we take the sample from the population in order to study the population. All right. So I'll have to ask you to accept the reasoning for the T distribution as it is right here. Okay. The next part of the question is to build the confidence interval. So here's how we do that. I have it outlined here, okay, for how to find the confidence interval for the mean when we use a T distribution, okay? So uh, we have a population of some kind. We've established that. We don't know the population mean or standard deviation. 
Those weren't given anywhere in the equation. We just don't have them, okay? So we take a sample of size n, okay? That's been established. We took a sample of size 48, and from that we calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation. Those were also given. Maybe on some problems I do have to calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation, but here they were just given to me. It says here in our sample of 48 people, the mean was 26.3 and the standard deviation was 6.07. Okay, so I don't have to do this second part because it was already given to me. So from that sample, we build our confidence interval like this. We take X bar, which is the sample mean, minus or plus TC, which is a number I'll tell you about in a minute, times S, which is the sample standard deviation, over root n, which is the sample size. So all of those numbers we have already, I've got the sample mean, I've got the sample standard deviation, I've got the sample size. The only number I don't have is this number TC. I'll find that from the T distribution and I'll use StatCrunch. So here I've got StatCrunch ready to go so I can figure it out, okay? All right. So there's our formula. I want to show you down here how I started building that confidence interval, okay? Now, I haven't yet told you about every single number here, but we know most of them. In fact, we know all but one. The lower bound of the confidence interval, the lower number is the sample mean X bar minus TC times S, the sample standard deviation over root N, the sample size. So look, I've got that all here. I just didn't tell you how we got the number TC yet. So 26.3 sample mean minus, okay, S sample standard deviation 6.07 root N sample size 48. This is the same thing, the upper bound for the confidence interval, same thing, except for it's plus instead of minus. So we know every number here except for TC. So let's talk about how to find that. We find that number from the T distribution. So if I go to stat crunch and I go to stat calculators and T, it brings up the T distribution. I'll use this to get that last number that I need. Okay. All right. When we use that, our first step is to set it to between. And then there's some boxes I have to fill out down here. So one of those numbers is the degrees of freedom, okay? So do you see this box here, DF? That means degrees of freedom. What that will always be when we're doing this is the sample size minus one, okay? So in my case, the sample size N was 48. So my degrees of freedom is gonna be 48 minus one or 47, okay? Next, I have to express the confidence level. So what, how confident are we wanting to be? In other words, let's look back up here. Uh, it says a 95% confidence interval. All right, so that expresses how confident ultimately I'm gonna be in this answer. So for that, I put 0 0.95 right there. So that expresses our confidence level and degrees of freedom. That's all I have to put from there. I just put compute and this number is going to be TC. So now I've got everything. I've showed you everything. Sample mean 26.3 minus or plus TC 2.0117. Sample standard deviation 6.07 divided by square root sample size 48. Okay, so I've got everything. The rest of it, I'll just do with handheld calculator, okay? So, you know, I took with that calculator, 26.3 minus and then plus 2.0117 times 6.07 over root 48. I got these numbers, 23.537, so on, and 28.0625, so on, okay? So those are my numbers for the confidence interval. This is the lower and that's the upper. Now let's look back up at the question to talk about how we should enter this in. Uh, so here it says 95% confidence interval is, and this will be the lower and that will be the upper. 
beyond that it says round to two decimal places so what's 23.537 rounded to two decimal places 23.54 so notice up here 23 point or 24.54 okay Ooh, I wrote down hold on okay I had written down 23 on accident should be 24 so 24.537 becomes 24.4 or 24.54 okay and then this next one 28.0625 to two decimal places becomes 28.06 which is what you see right there all right so that's my confidence interval that's how you do all the math uh, so let's go back to my original question or my original uh, thought process for the scenario to answer this last part it says interpret the results so remember what we're trying to do I want to know something about the population I want to know of the population of all people what the mean or average body mass index is and I took this sample of 48 people and measured their individual body mass indexes and found the mean and I want to know what does this tell us about the population I want to know something about the population to begin with that's my ultimate goal in taking the sample and studying it does it mean that the average body mass index for all people is 26.3 uh, if it doesn't mean that what does it say well so it turns out that the sample can't tell us any specific number about what the population mean is but I can give you with some confidence what range it's in okay so that's what this is I can't tell you through taking the sample exactly what the population mean is I can't tell you exactly what the average body mass index is for the whole population but I can tell you with 95 percent confidence that it's somewhere between 24.54 and 28.06 okay so I can't tell you exactly but I'm very confident I mean almost to 100% confidence that it's somewhere in there so that narrows it down that's what the confidence interval does okay but there's no way to know what exactly uh, the population mean is unless we take every single person in the population measure their body mass index and then average them together all right which like I said is just impractical so the confidence interval is the best that we can do okay so that there is the last part about the meaning of the confidence interval that's what it tells us okay so a quick summary so I have my problem I told you that we use the T distribution and the reasons for that and the second part I told you how we do all the calculation and find our numbers for the T distribution calculated all that put that answer in and then the last part we talked about what it meant